Understanding Financial Accounting, Part 6, Accruals and Deferrals Continued. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And the source for this information is one of the online publishing sites, McGraw-Hill, and a book on finance and management accounting. I want to move on with our explanation of accrual entries. And if you will remember from Part 5, accrual entries affect more than one accounting period and the entry affects one income statement account revenue and expense either one and it affects one balance sheet account and asset or liability so when you're making these accrual and deferral entries you should have one of each one income statement one balance sheet account I want to continue where we left off in the last example what we have here is the Levi Jeans Company, September income statement, October income statement. We have revenue and expense for both. And we have cash basis in the left hand column, which assumes revenue and expenses based on your checkbook. You write a check, it's an expense. You make a deposit, it's revenue. The accrual basis takes into account accruals and deferrals. And these journal entries off to the right are the accrual-based journal entries. And what I have at the top, and I always mention when you're doing journal entries, is the first thing you should think about is, did anything happen to cash? Because you'll find that about half your journal entries or more are going to involve a cash account. So it's a good starting point. We had done so the September income statement. Now we're going to roll down to October. And the last thing you'll see at the bottom of the page is the four types of adjustments that you'll do for accruals and deferrals. So here we are in October, and on the 3rd, we pay September payroll that we had accrued for on September 30th. On September 30th, we owed people money for September salary, but we hadn't paid them yet. And here it is, October 3rd, and now we pay them. If you look what we did on the 30th, we recorded a payroll expense and we recorded a payable for the payroll. Now we're going to get rid of the payroll by debiting and we're going to pay cash for that payroll. The next thing October 5th is there's a $20,000 payment that comes in on an invoice that we generated back on September 12th. So back on September 12th, we sell 2,000 pairs of jeans and we bill the client. On an accrual basis, we recognize revenue, credit, receivable debit. Now on the 5th, we get the $20 payment, $20,000 payment. On a cash basis, we have cash coming in, we count that as revenue. On the accrual basis, we recorded the revenue back in September when we delivered the product or service, which in this case was the pair of jeans. So the accrual entry on October 5th is cash comes in the door and we get rid of the receivable. Note that there is no revenue generated. The revenue got generated back in, on September 12th when we delivered the product or service. Next entry on October 11th refers to something that happened on December 9th. Someone prepaid for a pair of jeans on September 9th. We got $10,000 in the door, but that was not revenue. We got $10,000 in cash, and on a cash basis, we counted it as revenue. But in fact, it was a liability, unearned revenue on the accrual basis. The reason being that if we didn't deliver the jeans, if we didn't deliver the product or service the company prepaid for, we'd have to return the money. So that's what happens on September 9th. We run down to October 11th. We deliver the jeans, the product or service. We now recognize the revenue. So the, on the accrual basis, we have $10,000 in revenue. And the accounting entry on an accrual basis is move the funds from unearned revenue which was a liability account we debit it to get rid of it and we move it into revenue 
the last entry refers to interest that we earned in September but had not gotten paid yet. So on September 30th, we were owed interest maybe on a CD that we had at the bank. We record the revenue in September because that's when we earned it, and we record accrued interest, which is a receivable account. We're waiting to get the interest that we earned in September. So here it is, October 15th, and the interest is paid. The cash comes in the door on a cash basis. We record revenue. But on the accrual basis, we'd already recorded the revenue in late September. So now we're just recognizing cash. We debit to increase it. And we're reducing the receivable by crediting. So I want to go back to the four types of adjustments and tie them into the entries we have. The first is converting an asset into an expense. And that refers to the prepaid account that we saw in number five. All of us write checks for insurance, and we're always paying for the next three months, the next six months of insurance. We're always paying ahead. So on a cash basis, we have an expense. But on the accrual basis, we don't. And the reason that we don't is we haven't incurred the expense yet. Insurance and bank loans and depreciation are the types of expense that are incurred with the passage of time. So we have to wait for time to pass before we have an expense. So in the meantime, we record an asset account called prepaid insurance and the cash going out the door. At the end of the month, when time has gone by, one month has gone by, on the accrual basis, we now record $1,000 or one-third of that expense, one-third of that insurance cost as insurance expense. So here's a debit to insurance expense. Here's a credit to reduce the prepaid account. The second type of adjustment is converting a liability into revenue. This refers to that cash we collected in advance. That deposit that the client gave us was not revenue. Instead, it was unearned revenue or a liability account. And if we go up to entry number two here at the top, there was the unearned revenue. And when we deliver the product or service, it moves out of unearned revenue and into revenue. That was adjustment number two. Adjustment number three referred to payroll where we owed payroll at the end of a particular month, but we don't pay it until the following month in October. Many of us have had jobs where we're not paid on the 15th and the 30th of the month. Maybe it's every two weeks, regardless of where that falls in a month. So we need to recognize an expense in September for the payroll, even though we're not paying it till October. That's number three, payroll. So we have interest and property taxes that are similar to this payroll entry. The fourth type of adjustment is accruing uncollected revenue. This is the interest earned number four, where we earn some interest in September. We recognize a receivable in the revenue, and then when we get paid the interest, the cash comes in the door, cash goes up, we get rid of the receivable by crediting. So those are the four types of accruals and deferrals. That's the end of part six. Part seven's on YouTube. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You can find live tutoring and chat sessions on our website, stltest.net. Thanks very much, and we will see you next time.